Dan here at the East Beach Shop. Today's video brought to you by Danielle Shirts. Made a bunch of shirts on the website. And she made me, which, well, you people made her, uh, Nomad Shirts with the car on the back. I'm a front shirt guy, but uh, y'all wanted that. So anyway, she got that up there for you. ddspeechup.ca Anywho, last video, so we got this motor home, which was actually earlier today. It's now late, so we're not going to get a whole lot done right now. Danny's yawning already. It's that time. Motors here, transmissions here. What I want to do, I haven't even opened the boxes that I got with all the parts. So I want to pull all that apart, show you what I have, make sure I have everything I need because uh, we're actually coming into a long weekend here. And if I don't have something, oh yeah, I need a stud. And this, I gotta put this over here. Wow, it went right through. <laughs> Remember how I said it's not even a rusty car, but it fell right through. Awesome. Actually, I need I need that stud. I gotta remember to get that for the uh, Tamara. So the the plan is, I think I said it in the last video or two or seventeen, small block Chevrolet with uh, a Muncie four speed behind it, and we have a twelve bolt Posi three seventy three. So it'll be a pretty sweet little ripper. And I ended up buying a bunch of stuff uh, a few weeks ago. I got a bunch of Holly. Holly gear they had a deal uh irs or i don't know what it was but it was a, it, everything was on sale and i was like you know what who needs to make the mortgage payment so i bought a bunch of gear i don't remember what it was but i remember oh yeah man i tell you so four speed stuff they are not giving away but we got oh. Whoops, competition shifter. So that's badass. Man, I tell you, if you guys see a competition shifter at the swap meet, complete for like 100 bucks, buy as many as you possibly can because they are out of control pricing. Okay. Those came with the car. Scatter shield, we know we have that. Now there should be clutch and whatnot. I don't know what's. what's Okay, this is the Hayes clutch. So there was a few options. I think there's a 450 horse and a 650 horse. And since the motor's making right at 450, I want the 650. So we got that. That's you. Did John say that you gotta go easy on the motor? I think he said don't rev it to the moon. That's what I remember hearing. I also remember hearing if I break it, it can be fixed with money. So that's one of those things, whatever you have into it, you just spend more and build it better. You got to find the weak part sometimes. Pressure so, testing. Yeah. You got to pressure test the system every now, now and again. So I'm thinking this car should be very well balanced with the, uh, oh, that's quite the box. I mean, we're going to have 400, 434 horse. And I think it was 400 foot pounds of torque, pretty flat throughout the curve into a Muncie Trans, which they'll handle 400 horse, no problem, and into a 12 bolt. My only fear was, oh, steel flywheel. I almost went with an aluminum one, but I decided not to. Sorry, John. So we got that. That's cool. Um, the only issue with a stick car, when you just dead shock it, if you have big tires on the strip, which I do none of that, I'm just a poser guy, but uh, that's how parts break, and uh, we're trying to avoid that. Now, I think, so that's that, man. It wasn't really that much stuff, but it's expensive. Scatter shield, obviously, that's what's in that box. We got a set of chassis headers. I'm fighting it out. I have, I thought I had some. Might be in the basement. I have fender well headers, tri five fender well headers, and I mean, I'd love to try them, but I might just use the ones that everyone else wants. And that, man, body work and dust, just terrible. And then actually I bought, down here it was a smoking deal, but an all-in-one put together Flowmaster muffler kit. So I put one of those on, I don't even know how many years ago, but I remember it was $400 at the time through the local speed shop on my 71 
Nova. It was a small block Chevy. Flowmaster 40 Series or American Thunder. I don't know what it was, but it was so slick. Everything goes together. It has these big clamps on it, and it has spots in the frame that it would actually put these like kind of one-way, like a drywall anchor, I guess. Like it would go in, you tighten it up, and it put the hanger exactly where it wanted to be. Like it was so easy versus the the butchery I'm usually doing. And I love the way it sounded. So this is rods, rods. And, so I tell you what, the rods and the Hurst shifter were, a, were an item to have, but when you buy a, ba a bare transmission, like- They don't come together? They do not come together. That's what I'm saying. So the way this thing works is there's a set of rods and levers that go back to here, which I think they're 200 bucks. And then the shifter, itself i think was 500 bucks us so we're talking a g note canadian for those two boxes yeah and then i went honky tonking on an msd distributor because i'm an idiot i should have whatever it's awesome so that's pro billet deal this you know what it was i put one of those in the nomad just friggin' worked and i absolutely loved it and then actually I bought an intake. I just want to make sure it's the same one because we were playing with it on the dyno and we had uh, this motor with, where did I put that intake manifold? Did we leave it there? No, I brought it inside. I could have sworn I did. But I had this tunnel ram, which everybody cracks me. Everyone loves to tell me I'm an idiot for it, but I mean, it's all about looks. Where did I put it? Is it in the back of the truck still? Anyways, I had a single tunnel ram deal and uh, it was pretty good, but this style single plane uh, made more power. So Cecil had bought this intake at a uh, swap meet, brand new in the box. They, they went home, got it, put it on so we could really make the number. And then uh, I told him, I was like, well, I ended up buying the exact same one. I just want to make sure it is. Yeah, strip dominator. Yeah, so it's. I think it's the exact same deal. I'll send him a picture and just make sure he's happy with it. A few little things, it only has the single distributor hold down. But I think otherwise, it looks virtually the same. Oh, it doesn't have pipe plugs at the back, which this one does. So I'll make sure he wants it. They, they let me have this just because the gasket and all that, you don't have to change it all. So that's cool. But I'll send him a picture and if he's cool with it, great. If not, we'll swap it out for a set of gaskets. You gotta keep the engine builder happy. So that's all that stuff uh, in the truck. On the way home from work, I got flywheel bolts and a pilot bushing. This one doesn't have that. So we'll double check those and make sure it fits on the transmission, then, uh, like I said, tomorrow after work, we'll put the flywheel on, torque it down, pilot bushing in, set the clutch up, make sure that all works. Inside, I think I have, well, I know I have somewhere, the uh, throw-up bearing and the fork, mechanical, I'm going all mechanical stuff, Just put all that together, scatter shield on. I don't have bolts for the transmission now that I think of it, I gotta get those, I think they're probably half inch. I should write that down and remember that for me and get bolts for the transmission. So I'm hoping by tomorrow, we should have the motor and transmission like together as one cohesive unit. And then we can uh, start putting it in this thing. Damage the paint. We're gonna take the whole front clip off. Sure. It'll Once the motor trans are together, I actually gotta take the whole front clip off. I wanna paint the firewall. I wanna get that dialed together. This just has to be perfect, DD speed shop. And then this will be able to slide in real nice. So. Anyways, that's really it for tonight. I'll be back at tomorrow. It'll be clock wipe, and we'll see you right away. Okay, so it's a new day. I cleaned up just a bit. And right now, this is the rare time I did spill that. I keep forgetting to put a lid on that jug of transmission fluid. <laughs> Quit judging. The river's over there. Anyway, um, this is like the... Danielle? We're distracted. This is, this is the rare time that I actually try and be a little organized when I put stuff together like this, because trust me, I have done it poorly organized and it's a shit show. So the plan today, I wanna to put the motor and transmission 
together. You know, unity, trust. So we're gonna have to get this thing and put it up on the on the crane. Unfortunately, I didn't get fine thread studs. Oh, I can steal them off the 57 outside, actually. We can lift this thing with a motor plate, but we have to get this motor on the crane uh, off the, the little carrier, and then we have to do this. So this is the kit I bought. This is all haze stuff. I think I said earlier it was a 650 horse deal, which I think is a little on the overkill side, but otherwise it was the 450 horse, which is like right on the cusp. And uh, hey, who knows what we do. We put some different cylinder heads on this motor or something like that. We have a little bit more power down the road. But, well, the steel flex plate and, uh, you know, it's fancy kind of clutch deal. It's definitely a little, it's got like the pucks are all spread apart. So I think it'll be a little, a little grabby. And uh, you got to make sure when you're ordering it, you're the right kind of deal. So I, I did. And this, it's got this little alignment tool, which will match the transmission. So Muncie's only have, uh, I don't know, 11 spline and 20 something or coarse and fine. Remember it that way. So we got that. I had to run to the hot rod shop and get a few things. So I got flywheel bolts. You gotta make sure they're flywheel, not ring gear. They are slightly longer. So I'll join that on there. They got pressure plate bolts. They're just, I think three eighths bolts, but they have a little shoulder on them. So that's what's gonna hold the pressure plate on. So we'll dig that. And then I bought a pilot bushing. I should have bought two of these because I last time I put one in, I, I screwed it up. You can buy a bushing or a bearing. I just like these. Now make sure, so what's gonna happen is this is gonna hold the snout of the transmission in the back of the motor. So make sure this fits nicely. Not all kind of sloppy. There's different sizes. And then we're gonna have to hammer this in there. And that's just what's gonna hold the, the transmission. So we have that. And then I got some miscellaneous hardware. Uh, I think I got this actually motor mount bolt. And then I got hardware for the transmission to bolt to the scatter shield. Now this is where, again, having everything out makes a little bit life a little easier because I've done this wrong <laughs> in the past. So typically, oh yeah, I'll put the, you know, you put the flywheel on, you start going, all of a sudden you're like, shit. The scatter shield, this is actually the first plate to go on. So you're gonna put this plate against the block, then you're gonna put the flywheel on, then you gotta do the clutch, then this, it all has to go together. Because trust me, when you put the flywheel on, you get the clutch aligned, then you go to put the scatter shield on and you don't have this on there, and it all has to come apart, that's very annoying. So, let's go ahead and steal parts off that 57 out there. <laughs> and then uh, we'll get this thing up on the engine crane. We'll come back when you're on the engine crane and we'll start assembling it. Then it should go uh, smooth like butter. The motor transmission together. I'm not gonna worry about putting distributor or any of the shift linkage or any of that stuff on just yet. I wanna get the motor in a lump. Then uh, we'll have to take the whole front clip off this thing and shine it up, make it look nice. Cause we can't put you know, garbage together. It's cold outside today though, unfortunately. I should have got carb studs. Maybe I have some. I'm gonna go look, see if I have carb studs. If I do, I'll save us a trip outside. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this all together. Danny pumped up the crane, pumped it. Pumped it. Every time I put one of these on, people always panic. They're like, you're using a carb stud thing. I'm like, I don't know. They can do the math of what a 516 stud can lift and it's ridiculous. Plus John and Cecil do it, so they know what's going on. John and Cecil do it and really <laughs> professionally approved. They want drag week. Oh, you want me to put it down? You told me to pump it up. I told you you had gone too far. Come on. Well, that's some good filming. Make sure you give it a couple of shakes. Come on. Crank it down, down, down. These people are paying by the minute. Okay, it's good. It's like a 1-800 number. Pump it up. Pump it. Man, keep going. So we're zing this thing off. Come on, that's MERS. You gotta treat it with some respect. Keep going, keep going. We'll have to lift it uh, a ways up, so just keep letting it rip. Hands here. Why? Right arm strong. It, uh. I am shaking the heck out of the hands. Maybe I got extra Andy shake on today. Nobody even commented on that. 
made me sick to my stomach when I ended it. You're not pumping. Oh, I thought I had enough clearance, Quinn. No, I have to work on it at chest height. My chest, not yours. <laughs> Why'd you make that gesture? Well, do you want to pump? Yeah. We'll be back at ride height. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna put this pilot bushing in. We'll spray a little, a little graphite spray on it. Hopefully that'll make it help go in just a little bit. Now, this has a bit of a rounded edge, so we'll have that, I guess, on the outside. Then we're gonna use a socket to kind of drive it in once you get it started. Hopefully, I'm hoping. I wish I had a deep socket, but. I have screwed these up many times, many a time in the past. So, hopefully this driver in straight, straight-ish. Yeah, I definitely need a deep socket. Hang on, I'll be right back. I got one from next door. Floating is probably not the best for trying to drive it in, but I want the socket as big as it can, so it's grabbing as much surface area as possible. I've done it before and I've mushroomed it, and that's a real hassle. Okay. I think that's probably... Sounded like it went all the way in, now let's just make sure this... That's your biggest thing, that's what I did before. Another, don't be like Dan, I put it in, and I probably, I used the back side of the socket to hammer it in, I probably used the front side. I slipped at some point, and I mushroomed over the edge, it had a bit of a goofy kind of spot. Put it all together. And then you're trying to jostle the transmission in. Well, there's gonna be a whole mess of stuff here and you gotta thread the needle of the transmission in there. And if this doesn't fit easy, trust me, you're gonna have issues. So that's that. Now, maybe I should read the instructions. What do you think? This, starter's on what side? This side. So this is gonna go on like that. Ish? No. What am I got going on here? Oh, do I gotta knock something out? Hang on, I gotta read the instructions. Uh, okay, so we got this thing on, just sitting on the dowels. Now we gotta put the uh, flywheel on. Uh, I don't know if this is necessary or not. It does have these little grabber washers, but I like putting just a little bit of orange Loctics, that's what I had, but this is removable. It just, uh, I don't know. I feel like flywheel bolts are the one you don't want coming off. I guess there's not a whole lot of bolts you want coming off, but just a little dab, a little dab will do you. So I'll do that now. Jam this thing on. Now it's got like a offset kind of drilled hole. So, oh, this is heavy. Get it in there. Kind of line that up. Just like that. Don't fall on my fingers. Gentle. Okay. So we'll get these in now. I Googled it. Google says 60, 60 Torx or 75, it's ARP. These are just Mr. Gasket, so I assume they're probably on the standard size for Torx. So we'll just do 60. But the first thing we're gonna do is zap on there with the impact real quick. Okay. The old Chinese miscellaneous here, so 50, 60. Oh, we may need to Oh, maybe they'll do it. Okay, that's one. 
Well, I guess just go some sort of crisscross pattern. Click. Click. Look at that, impact it on, but it still needs just that little, that little bit. So I nailed it. Oh, that one's loose. Okay. Now I did, I don't know if I have a paint marker. I like to usually mark these just because if you ever walk away or whatever, you know it's done. Because believe me, that'll weigh on a guy if you don't. Uh, my organization of paint markers isn't great, but we'll just go ahead and use a Sharpie. And just do a little, just so if we happen to forget, we know it's all good. Okay, so that's dialed. It's really the wrong way of doing it. Now we have clutch. So this all kind of, this has a front or a back, or if these are the same. Do, 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 do. do I have a brake clean out? I feel like I wonder how many spins I do in a day. A ballerina. Oh, here it is. I believe it's a pirouette. It's a, no, pirouettes when you do a little kick or something like that, no. isn't it? Pirouettes is spin. So, we'll just make sure we get. I don't know if they ship these things. Sometimes like brakes and stuff, they ship with oil on them just so they don't rust or anything. We'll just make sure we use a little, little solvent. Get all the junk off of it. The clutch is in a bag, so I think we're probably fine there. Um, yeah, yes. Okay. This, I think these are all the exact same. Just gotta figure out which one this is. This flywheel is drilled for uh, 10 and a half and an 11 inch clutch. Oh, not that one. That one? Okay. So we got to attach to that deal. So now, oh, you're not being any help there, babe. Oh, I should clean this too much. What do you want me to do? I don't know, emotional support. Appreciate that. We'll clean this off too. So this is the old pressure plate clutch flywheel. So that's what transfers the power. When you step on the clutch, it separates the motor and transmission. And when the clutch is off, you're going. You're getting all 434 ponies. These ones here I will not lock tight. This is just a regular bolt, but they have a little shoulder on them. So we'll put this together like that. We're just gonna get these started. How come you're not putting Loctite on those ones? Uh, I don't know. These have lock washers on them. Oh. Oh, you know what I should have done? It's gotten a socket prepared. Can you get me a 3 8 uh, or a 9 16 that's not any of it. Oh, yeah, that works right here. There should be one there, yeah. Actually, you know what? I need another bolt first. What? Oh, let's take a bolt. You're giving me too much here. You're both, you're equally giving me too much and not enough. I don't even understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for just standing there. I passed it to you. Okay, so we have that. It's not going to fall apart. Now what you have to do, because this is all going to be spring loaded. This is jammed. Hang on. So we have to take our, this is where this little dowel thing goes in. So what's going to happen when the clutch is out, the flywheel, clutch, pressure plates all locked together, which is then putting power to the transmission. So once we tighten these bolts around, nothing's going to want to move. Well, in the meantime, I can move the clutch in here, right? So that's where we take our adjusting or our lineup alignment tool. Just put a little 
grease on this. Uh, I'll grease it real quick. Where's my grease? Man. So we have to align it, and then when you tighten it all together, it has to kind of be able to pull this in and out very easily. Otherwise, you're never, ever, 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 ever going to get the transmission together. So, bear that in mind. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Okay. I actually have a metal one. So now, what's happened is this is grabbing the clutch and that little end bit where the uh, like the tip of the transmission is in the back of the motor. So it's perfectly centered-ish. Perfectly centered. Well, we go ahead and lock this thing down. And this is gonna be, this is where all the magic is. Hopefully I can do it first time around. Are you have confidence there, darling? I always have confidence in you. In me or just in general? You didn't answer. So. <laughs> these, I don't think have much torque. I'll have to Google it, but they're probably like 30 foot pounds or something like that. So we'll just get them started. So now what happens, if I take the center bit out, the clutch didn't fall down because it's now held all together. Right now it's as if the clutch was out and driving. So we just got to make sure this, this goes in and out easy, which we have. So that's good. Now we just got to uh, Google the torque. So I'll do that right quick. We'll be right back. You're doing a lot of Googling today. Would you rather I guessed? Nope. I didn't dandle it. This one goes down to 40 is its lowest. It's calling for 35 foot pounds. So let's just use the old one that Murr bought me. Man, I feel like I'm gonna start needing glasses soon. Okay, it's 30. One, two, three, four, five. Put that on there. This one, I think you just wanna make sure you're kinda of working it back and forth. If you put it on, just like you're, like anything that's like circular or intake manifolds or whatever, you always want to kind of do cross, cross pattern. You can't really go wrong with that. Make it go in nice and easy. So we'll just kind of work it in. Cause as we're going, it's putting pressure on these springs and stuff, little fingers. So I'm just going to go and fill the pressure plate is actually touching the, the flywheel on the outskirts. You got one hand on the ratchet tape thing. So we have it seated square. That's good. Guess I didn't do that one. Good. 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 Is this still coming in and out? Yeah, we're still still good. So now we can torque it. Look at that, the old princess auto ratchet just never lets a guy down. Check them. I want to click without even really moving. That torque wrench. Who'd have thought? DD Speed Shop. Okay. So that's installed. Now let's. Uh, oh, we got to put this on. But you know what? There's parts inside I need still. I got my little fork on the Amazon coach. Hope we'll get that. We'll be here. Sweet. Okay, so I had to run in and get a few things. So I just ordered the four speed, nice and Camaro. You can buy all the bits. So this kit here is 
like the Z-bar and all the linkage for the clutch. I'm hoping we can make this work. This thing, small block Chevy, it should be okay. Um, a lot of guys put like a hydraulic clutch in, just makes life a bunch easier. So what's gonna happen, this bell housing fits on like that. And there's this little pivot ball here. And what we're gonna do is put this on like that. And as you push the clutch, this is gonna be on the motor like, obviously it's backwards for you. As you push in the clutch, it's gonna do this, like a little lever. And what that does, this is the throw out bearing and the bearing is gonna be right on the fingers of the clutch. So as you step on the clutch up here, a bunch of linkage moves, it forces this lever, pushes that in, which will release the clutch. Now this, another good little tidbit, I've done this wrong myself. People put it in, you do that, you think it's a little spring deal, right? And then as you step on it, you're actually pushing on the spring first. The proper way of doing it is actually putting it over like that. Lock it in, baby. So just be aware of that. I have done it wrong myself. And I might add, here's exactly how I found out I did it wrong. I put it all together. Actually, did I do this right? I did I did 100% wrong. It goes on this way, sorry. That was embarrassing. That's the way it's going to, same thing, but just I had it 180 out. But this is going to go in here like that. That gets bolted onto the back of the motor. Transmission gets bolted to this. You put it all together. You put it in the car. You edit the video. You put the video out. Comment number one, you put the throw bearing in wrong. Guess what? Throw bearing is still in wrong in the Nova. So I will say, even though it was wrong, it'll still work. But don't do it. This just has the same thing as this little spring clip deal. There's a little pivot ball in here. And we're just going to go ahead and snap that on. Maybe I'll put a little grease on it. I don't know if that matters or not. But I'll do that. We'll snap that on. And then it's uh, bolting for hours. Um, I don't know where we ended, but we're, we're good to go. Again, this is now, this is coming out, but it just it quadruple, triple. 85 time check it that this is going to go in and out because if that doesn't you will have problems i like to keep these oh, there's one hanging over here actually we'll put it with the other one this is a fine fine spline but we'll, we'll remember to deal with that later it won't fall off the compressor on the ground and the transmission fluid so this now okay come on it's you can really tell the gravity of the shop eh <laughs> So now this is going to go on. It's all going to sit on the dowels. The whole point of this, I don't know if I've explained that or not, just in case you're unaware. So this, this scatter shield is literally to, if the clutch or anything decides to blow up, it'll be contained in here. So typically it comes with an aluminum, uh, I don't have one here, but like an aluminum style. Same idea, it looks basically the same, but aluminum. And if anything lets go, it can come through. And you always hear the stories of the guys racing or doing whatever, and the clutch happens to let go, and it shoots right through the floor or something like that, and it can take out your ankle or any of those things. So cheap insurance. Ultimately, I had nothing. So to try and either find a stock one or get one of these, the price was negligible at this point, we'll call it. Um, now, everyone has their own schools of thought. I mean... Uh, Drag Week John again, he always says, if you have a really good fly with a really good clutch, it shouldn't come apart, which is very, very true. And I do think this is quality stuff. So overkill on overkill. These things here are a fortune. This one is brand new. So it's going to have a stamp on it. SFI data manufacturer 22 May. So it's, it's like brand new. This I don't know how long they're good for, but let's say five years. I don't know if that's right or not. But these things become out of spec. And uh, so like, drag racer guys will have to change this out. Even though it's in good working order, it's not quote unquote in spec anymore. And then, uh, you know, losers like me want to run the street. If you ever see them, you buy them. Because they still work. There's really nothing wrong with it. So now, let's see if we can get this lined up. Am I even close here? There we go. Oh, I need those bolts I set up. <laughs> so we'll get a couple of these in. Sweet. Sweet. Can you pass me the impact and the 
extension with the Allen. Yep, that one right there. Perfect. These probably stupid China Allen keys probably also have some sort of torque to them, but if you're torquing bell housing bolt stone, you're a better man than me. So now everything should be good. Everything will line up. So what's gonna have to happen, that shaft of the transmission, we gotta thread the needle through the throw out into the clutch and go from there. Now, I don't, I don't know, maybe this one you should do. When I did that uh, five speed American powertrain deal, they're real fasnickety on having the bell housing like zeroed out. So we actually had to get offset dowel pins to make sure everything was perfectly centered to the crank, which was uh, a hassle because you got to put it all together, measure what you need. And then if it's out to lunch, which mine was, you have to order them. So I think, oh, this one might not get a big flat washer on it. Um, perfect. These older ones, the uh, it's not quite as important. At least I've never done it before. I know on the newer cell transmissions, they got a big honking bearing in the front. And if it's not kind of perfectly uh, ligged up, you're gonna have problems. So we'll do this. And then the other thing we're gonna do is you have a whole other bag of hardware. So you see all these holes on the bottom and then the one on top, we have to do is clamp it all together because that front shield we put on, it's gonna be all bolted together. So if there ever is a catastrophic failure, that we maintain in the can. And that's really all we're trying to accomplish. So we'll just do that on our own. Come back when we're, when I'm wrestling the transmission in, which is always fun. It's like a dog trying to hump a football, getting her in there. Man, this- That's the analogy you're gonna go with? Yeah. Huh? Oh, this Allen key. Stanley tools, why are you always on sale? No, I'll be, things are gonna get hammery, so we'll just be right back. So, I've uh, got it all together. One bolt I didn't use. The instructions say to do bolt head, washer, lock, washer, nut on the inside. It interferes with the oil filter, so we'll have to get a shorter, a shorter bolt. But as you can see now, everything is all together. And at this point, if you've done something wrong, that's a torque wrench on the ground. Why'd you step on that? That's where we store things. You were gonna have issues. Now, <clears throat> now we gotta do is put uh, transmission on. So it's just held on with four half inch bolts. I got grade eight stuff just because, but realistically, again, the factory stuff is put into like an aluminum housing. So it's irrelevant. Um, now we're gonna wrestle this transmission in there. Just tech tip. When you're putting it in, it's gonna be frustrating and all that stuff. Like I said, you're gonna to have to kind of jostle it in. I might lift it up a little bit. You're gonna get it close. You wanna make sure the transmission is all the way seated before you start torquing the bolts in. It's a cast aluminum transmission case. And if you try and tighten it, it'll crack in the ear and then you got problems. So I'll hopefully get started, put some bolts in just to hold it so it can't fall out and you gotta kind of jostle it. I've had ones that are tight where you gotta kind of tighten the bolts just to give a little bit of pressure and then jostle it some more. So just take take your time, all that, and be, uh, be aware because you break an ear. Guys can weld it for sure, I guess, but it's a hassle. Ugh. Actually, you know what? I should put a little grease on this shaft real quick. One second, I'll be momentarily back. Okay, so I put a little grease on the input shaft just to hopefully make life a little bit easier going together. Now, this transmission's not nearly as heavy as the... Oh, man, that went unbelievably simple. I'm gonna Put a bolt in there. Hang, hang on, hang on. What's going on here? We got a problem. Just kind of 
Get one in there to hold it. Okay, man, girl, here we go. So again, we're not gonna launch her all the way in. It's not in the no, we prepared three. pile it. No, I for sure did four. Did it? Doesn't sound like me. This one's not quite want to go in, so we're gonna have to figure that out. Oh why. Give her a jostle. This might turn into a hassle.com. So you don't wanna Tighten them in there. This one didn't even go in. What are you doing here, darling? Thought you were on this. That TKX fought hard for whatever reason. It didn't didn't want to go in, which was a pain. So now it's kind of tight. Shake. It slowly will go in there. Unfortunately, it's going to be a bear. Oh, I see this being a problem. So, we'll use a wrench. So, you can have a pretty good feel on it. So, as we kind of jiggle it, it pulls itself in, so it's just a tight fit on that uh, pilot bushing. So I'll be messing with this for a little bit, and then we'll uh, come back, and hopefully it's in. It went swimmingly. So what I did, nothing, it, it, just, it was just tight, 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 tight fit. So what I ended up doing is I took all the lock washers off, and basically, Put just either I used a wrench and and a hand on a socket and what I would do is you kind of just rest your your hand on it like just like one hand on the ratchet right choked up so you don't have any leverage then just kind of whack it shake it around hit wherever I could with a mallet and slowly but surely it would kind of work its way in so you do that one get a quarter turn go over here get a quarter turn and once it kind of seated itself i must have been just in that pilot bushing the last little bit just kind of jostled in and it was fine so i did that now i did take off the lock washers because i wanted to know exactly what was happening so you could see if there's any gap happening there or whatever because obviously the little spring washer there it'll give you a false sense of is it tight is it loose is it whatever so you'd be knocking it in like you'd knock 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 and then you go over here and it would just whoop, it would move like a quarter turn and you just give it just a little snug then you know knock 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 and keep going so now we'll uh we'll go ahead and put these on it's all dialed together and i kind of think that's all we're doing for this video i honestly the stress level was a little high so i want to make sure i can take a break before we start working on anything else but the motor's 100 well you know what i'll put this in i'll take a quick water break and then we'll uh we'll put the headers on just for fun sounds like a good plan because then it'll look cool i don't think i'm going to worry about the linkage we'll do that in the car because it shouldn't be hopefully too much of an issue and then yeah fun times Fun time. <laughs> with two big ol' F's. With the price <laughs> oh, there's a price on everything right now, I tell you. You don't need any of those screws. 
screws you just dropped. Nah, don't worry, the tires will pick those up. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, hot chocolate from the other day you got me. Drink it. <laughs> I think that's been there a couple days. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> so, these hooker. What do I get here? Hookers. Love me a hooker. And uh, these, I believe, when I looked it up, they're four speed compatible gaskets, collector stuff, nuts and bolts. So, oh, we gotta take the Sandeli tape off. Yes. Oh, these are big, decent sized primary tubes. Three inch collector, yeah. I must have had good taste, because that's the, that's the this side, which is basically irrelevant. This car, uh, this car, uh, so rear steer, a bit of a hassle. You gotta make sure you kinda have stuff figured out for that, but I'm sure it'll work out just fine. Um, so the headers. As I recall, when I did my my 71 Nova, which is a, basically the exact same as this car here underneath wise, it's basically a, a different body. I ran full length headers. And I, it's currently a big block with a four speed. And I believe at one point it was a small block four speed, I think. It was a small block automatic. Did, it, did I not have a small block four speed? It was immediately, um, did, I did a big block at the same time? I think so, because I drove it when it was automatic. That does sound like something I would do. It's just go big block, four speed at the same time. So either way, well, yeah. Where are those headers? Oh, I gave them to that kid. I had a set of uh, big block Camaro Fancy headers. But, okay, so. Really the big thing is this is gonna be in the way of any of the clutch stuff. And I think we're gonna be okay, I hope so. The way it works, if I put this on right quick, I can actually show you with all the bits and pieces. Oh yeah, we're gold and I can tell already. So what's gonna happen, come on. Sorry, 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 I'm working fast, works best I can. Okay, yeah, we're mint. So what happens is the exploded view. This is your Z-bar. The Z-bar. We're Canadian, it's a Z-bar. This is your Z-bar. Does it come with a little ball? Oh no, oh no. So oh yeah, it does. So this little ball is gonna go in the block. Oh, is it a different size? Oh no, it just says paint in it. So we'll just start that. But this ball is going to be in the block. This here is going to go like this. Now obviously that'll be tightened in more. This here has a little pivot piece. This gets bolted to the frame or welded. And it'll fit like this. So. What's gonna happen is as you step on the clutch, this, this is not aligned in any way, just keep that in mind. And this is supposed to kind of free, free move. But as you step on the clutch, a rod's gonna push this way, or maybe it'll pull. I don't know, anyways. We'll do that, and what's gonna happen is gonna be a rod that'll go from here to here. And as you do that, it'll work it back and forth, right? And you gotta pretend if this was connected to that, it would be pushing it back. So that will clear all the, all the headers, which is nice. We have no issues there. And then the headers drop behind the oil pan. And I know John Cecil put this oil pan on, but there was an oil pan on the car when I gave it. I gave them a small block with that oil pan. It was junk, we were talking about using it on this. But we weren't, because it was all corroded and, and whatnot, so they bought this pan. I, I didn't check, but I assume it's gotta be the same as the, the other one, in which case, Everything should just fit. This thing does have these angle plugs. Hopefully that fits around the headers nicely. I don't know if that makes life better or worse, but it sure friggin' looks cool. Oh, this back, that back header is gonna be a hassle, that back tube. 
Look at that. Man, it's amazing that you can put <laughs> many thousands of dollars in parts together in <laughs> a quick afternoon. Okay. Well, that looks badass. I feel like I'm like 18 and 1976 and dazed and confused. This would be our hot rod we'd be driving. Over the moon tower. Yeah, we'll go to the moon tower, man. Anyways, that's what we're going to leave for now. I think that's lots of junk to go over. The next step... Oh, yeah, I think there should be lots of room here. I got a transmission mount. So next step, we're going to push this into the corner. I got to clean up in here. There's boxes everywhere. Front clip off. Actually, we need some blankets or something like that because we've got to protect this minty paint. We'll take the front hood and fenders off and the core support out. Then we should be able to slide the motor in. I got new motor mounts. I got a new transmission mount. We do have, this thing had a transmission mount that came with it. Oh, it's right here. I should actually I'll wire wheel this and paint it. But this is what's going to support the back. So everything will, yeah, will clear the exhaust. Everything is just going to work out tickety-boo. So yeah, next we will take that up. I got to paint the firewall because I was lazy, didn't do that before. And then we'll slide the motor in. Front clip can go back on. I got to weld the core support. Oh, there's endless things to do, but this, this is a good one. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe below. Buy a shirt that I'm not wearing, but Danny is. She misbuttoned. Did I? No. Oh, you nailed it. Okay. This looks misbuttoned. Show you. Show them my shirt. You're just, you're large up top. So sometimes things don't fit. Garage hack. Very true. Thank you so much. And we will see you on the next video, which is going to be after a snack for me.